Hello everyone. I'm trying to spend about five minutes to go through uh, explaining this noun leaf procedure call example in MIPS assembly. I know this is uh, confusing and tedious, so I decided to record a video so you can read, read this or review this many times. And we are going to implement this statement this set of a program in C. So some place outside this um, this program, some place outside will call this procedure. Okay. So that one will be uh, we don't show the code, but some place will call this. And remember, this is a recursive call. So this program, this procedure will run and run. And call continue to call itself until this n is essentially z uh, less than one or zero. Right. So when n equals zero, we stop and return to the previous um, call. Okay. Eventually, we're going to return to the outside caller. Okay. And of course, we assume the n will be put into a register called a zero. And we want to every time we return, um, we want to return the value in the register v zero. So that's our assumption. So now let's take a look at the code. So this is the assembly code, and uh, let's take a look at it. We and now let's look. Let's look at the MIPS code. The MIPS code. Let's start from looking at this uh, two labels. One is the entry point of this uh, MIPS code. So whenever a call uh, start, it come here to start running this line. So this is the beginning or entry point of this procedure. And let's look at the other label. So this label is if we need to call ourselves again, we reduce the argument by one. For example, if the first call is we got a, a call function call passed argument of three, the next time we call ourselves, we'll be calling with a argument two. Okay, so this is this is the recursive, right? So we jump and link to ourselves over here. So keep that in mind. So this is part of recursive, and this is this one is our. Um, is our uh, stack. So stack, I'm written in a way that you, uh, it's a, m most people write it away. So the lower address, 000, zero, zero the whole memory is down here, and go all the way up to uh, assume that memory stopped at FFF. Okay? And every one of these can store, um, remember, four bytes. That's why if you see the address, every time we go, this is zero. We add four bytes to it. Okay, so keep that in mind. There's a reason why we have, for example, minus eight, meaning we uh, move stack pointer eight bytes down to allow to store two uh, values. Okay, let's see. Let's let's say some other outside function call our uh, fact. Let's start with something. Let's do something simple. Let's say outside function call with a argument of three. Okay, so this is starting to come here. We know that a zero now has three in it. So now, first we adjust the stack for two items. Let's assume the stack was at the empty, meaning point to at the end, nothing in there. So we Add in medium minus a. What does that mean? It means the stack now is moving down and down eight bytes or two blocks or two words. So we are pointing now is over here. We save the return address. So whatever outside function called us, we need to return to the outside function. So let's assume this, we call this outside, OK? 
Okay, so this is the address of the outside function, outside uh, call we need to return eventually. So we the, see this is the the stack point over here. We do the offset of four. So we we put the outside address over here. So this is the first item we put into stack. Okay, now we put the first argument. Remember, it's three. We put three over here. Okay. So now at this line, we can see the stack is pointing over here, and we have the first argument three and an address going out back to whatever outside procedure. So that's how it, the stack look like right now. Let's go down. Okay, we test to see, hey, if this argument is less than zero, why is not? It's not, that means this, if it's not zero, uh, if it's zero, well, we, we set this if it's less than zero. So this one will give us, we'll branch to L1 if N is not zero. So here we say, okay, it's not zero, so let's go come here. Okay. So we reduce A0 by one or, or add minus one to a zero. Now a zero. Remember it was three. Now it's two. We go call this again. Okay, we call ourselves again. Now remember, now the a zero has two. Okay, you start with three. Now it has two. We come here. Look at this. We add two space to the stack. So we now move one. And two. Now the stack is pointing here. Okay. What do we do? We put the re the the return address over here. Now where is the re this return address? This return address is the right after this line. Okay. Remember we call this when we do the JAL. Re it record what's going on over here. So this time we put it return address is this line. We will call it the function call the F3 because th at that time the number is 3, the, the argument is 3. So somehow we have to return here. Okay. And let's look at what is the next argument we save. Oh, we save this one. We save our current a two a zero uh, uh, value that is two. Okay, let's try that. So now we save two over here. Okay. Good. Now let's come to compare to see if this a two is less than one. Well, it is not. So. We continue the process. Oh, come on, mouse. Okay. So, that this is not less than one. What do we do? We branch to L one. So we jump to here. Okay. We reduce this a zero value by one. Now it's one. Okay. Remember now the current value of a zero is one. Now we call ourselves again. Okay. We repeat the process again. Okay. We now we call ourselves again. That means we need to reserve another two space in the stack. So two, one and let's try this and two. Okay. Now the stack is over here. Okay, so this is confusing. You see, every time we call ourselves, the stack is getting deeper. So what do we do this time? We want to return whatever is calling us. The one that called us is our same function, but with two as the argument. So that's the, the one outer loop. Okay, and we save the argument. What is the argument now? Argument is a one is one, so we save one over here. Okay, we go down next one to test if n is less than one. 
Well, it's not less than one. It's one. So that means we call ourselves one more time. So go to L1. See, we come here. Now this is called the fourth time. Okay. We reduce this A0 by one. So now remember the A0 have value zero. Now we call ourselves again, jump and link back to here. Okay. We go through this, add immediate minus A. See, the current stack is over here. Now we're going to reduce this by 8. So now the stack of pointers over here. What do we do? Again, we save the return address RA over here. So this is a place we return for whatever that function is. In this case, happened to be ourself. But this is an outer call. And we save the current argument a0. See, the current argument is a0. So we save zero over here. So that's a big zero over here. Okay, we continue to do this. Now this time is different. So test for n minus one. Well, this is now is true. So this is the t0 is set to one, it's no longer zero. So we don't jump. This time we don't jump. This time we are ready to run the next one. So what are we doing? We are moving one. Well, we're adding one to zero, put it back to our return value fv0. So after this line, the v0, let's put v0 here, will have one. Okay, v0 have one. We pop two items from the stack. Look at that. That means we reduce now is back one and two. Now the stack point is over here. Okay. And we, we, when we return, where do we return to? Okay, we return to the previous address. Okay, return to the previous address. Where is the previous address? Remember, it's here. Right? This is when we got call, this is the last instruction. When we return, we go back to. The instruction afterwards. Okay, what do we do? We put the stack value that was now that was uh, now the stack value is over here, right? We put one into a zero. Now a zero is one, and we put the return address into R a. Return address is here. This one, it happened to be the same address here. Okay, but we'll come back to that later. Okay, we pop two items from the stack. Okay, now remember, now the stack was pointed over here. Okay, here we multiply our uh, current a0, which is 1, by the return value also is 1. So v0 now is still 1, and we, re and we return. Where do we return to? Return to remember this, this, we pop this one. So we return to again here, but now we are running at this level, the two level. So we keep doing this popping every time we re remove back over here two blocks and we multiply whatever we retrieve to our current value. So next time we run, it will be one times two. Then we pop these two, and next time, we two times three will give us six. And we pop another two block. And the last time we do the return, we return to the out. So we go out with a value in the V0 that is six. 
Okay, so that complete the recursive. Okay, the the function is called four times. So you can see that every time we put two item into the stack, going deeper and deeper and deeper. But when we are done, we kind of return and return, return until we finish all the function call. Everything in the stack is popped, is gone, and now our outside function got the correct answer of six. Okay, so run through this in your mind.、Um, It, I know it's complicated, but once you get it, you know the power of a stack used、uh, in function call, especially in recursive calls.